B3-32 has kind of this uh, this cutout, and it's a little hard to discern what's going on, but pretty much the the notch that comes out. The question that I get all of the time is this circle part of the uh, the revolve or the round, or is it uh, straight through? Well, since we really can't see the bottom, and I can't drill curved holes like that. Uh, the assumption is that it goes through. Now, if we were 3D printing this, then we could have this port go all the way around and uh, generate the geometry. Otherwise, I would have to split it, uh, make two notches, and clamp it back together. So, uh, just on the, the manufacturing process, we're not going to um, make that part of our system. Since we don't get to do too many revolves or there's not... Um, not that opportunity then we'll go ahead and and um, build this as a revolve so to maintain this orientation I'm going to draw in the top plane and it will be a horizontal center line that I create for this geometry so file new pick up our part millimeter opening up a sketch in the top plane I want a center line that is horizontal infinite length and we drop that on the origin and accept and I'll get out of that and we're just going to make sure that the um, the center line picked up that relation so I want to include the the hole in this revolve so I'm going to start off of the center line and that's going to create the gap come back up and over and so anytime you're making a revolve, you're looking at what would be, well, even though this is in the front plane, it's a good example. If we carried this all the way across, up and over, back, we're basically cutting the part in half and then quartering it. So whatever we're looking at in that quarter view, that gives us the geometry that we want for the revolve. All right, so we need some dimensions. This is able to move. So I'm going to go with the line and the origin coincident. And then the through bore is a diameter of 16. The outside is 22. And right now we'll, we'll stay in the diameter dimension. And the last uh, diameter then is 40. All right, so... So since I applied the first one, when I look at this dimension, there is a D instead of the R, and so it's not jumping back and forth. All right, so in this case, just applying the, the diameter dimensions, and we stayed in diameter, I would have to hit escape and back out of that to, uh, to get it clear. All right, so once I apply the, the next linear, so previous versions or maybe this even this service pack uh, for 2018 is now um, recognizing that this is a linear dimension maybe that I already have a diameter dimension over here so I don't have to uh, to escape out of the diameter so we're just kind of watching for those symbols and figuring it out as we go so 60 millimeters and then we have a distance of 20 millimeters for the edge and that gives me the geometry that I need for the rotate. Alright so revolve boss base there's only one center line so I'm going to get my geometry even though parts of this are only three quarters of the way around I wouldn't want to put 270 or 180 um, I want to create the full geometry and make sure to go back and create the cuts. Alright so we're going to have a, a couple of cuts here and so looking at this, this shape, I have one corner removed over here, and then we have half removed over here, going through the center. So what are my dimensions? 20 and then back to the face. So Let's uh, open up a sketch on the end, 
and we'll kind of create those uh, those geometries so I can get a visual on it. All right, so even if I were to create those uh, those two segments, knowing that I'm going to have to generate the regions for the cut, and I kind of kept that collinear even though it was at an angle, because I know I can come back and make it vertical later, just to kind of clean it up and get it to go fully defined. All right, so I'm going to go Control-7, and my first cut, Features, Extrude Cut, I'm going to generate a up to surface, and when I pick the surface, this will be the lower notch that goes up to, right? and then that one gives me the uh, the shape. All right, intended cut does not uh, intersect the model. Oh, yeah, that would help is to be in the in these regions. So I picked the um, the best region, but it isn't actually the region that that cuts the material. So if I were to do just that much, I would have a base effect because this is already removed area. This is already a removed area, and all I really needed was the um, arc. So the other option would have been, but probably would have to watch. Now let's go ahead and take out the region region one so we just see that review. But I want to watch for the um, selecting the contour mainly because it's going to take off all of that geometry. So we'll pick out just what we need. All right so that being the case then highlighting the sketch and going back into the extrude cut, I need to pick that sketch plane up and move it back to this this cut, which is 20 millimeters. So to do that, I have the from, and we're going to offset it 20 millimeters. And I'll make sure that it goes, well, since I don't have the preview, We'll jump into the selected contours, and then this one would be the entire contour as a cutting tool. All right, so since it's showing the preview coming forward, I want to reverse it. Maybe. There we go. And then the up to surface. No, we still have, uh, we still have that cut. So in that case, that's going to remove too much material, so I need to pick a different contour. Right, so I'm going to pick the regions, and we'll just go ahead and select all three so that I have the complete square to remove. All right, so instead of up to surface, then it will be through all. And now I get the preview that it's going to remove all those that material to the back. I'll go ahead and accept. All right, so that gives me the, uh, the shape. All right, so my design intent on the, uh, the hole if this needed to be uh, threaded at some point or changed over to a different um, from a standard hole to a uh, threaded hole then I want to use the hole wizard so I'm hitting the S key and going into hole wizard which is the same as coming up to the command manager and because I pre-selected the face I'll go control 8 and because I pre-select the face I shouldn't um, shouldn't have to change anything. Uh, let's see, can keep custom sizes. Well, let's just reset. Not sure what I told it to do last time. All right, so the we were in uh, a screw clearance. This is going to be an ANSI metric. It is not a dowel hole. It is a drill size, and we're going to go look for the five millimeter hole. And it is an up to next. All right, so position, if I see anything that asks for a 3D sketch or to select a face, we're going to come over and select that face. But because I pre-selected it, we're just going to click and uh, place a point. So we're in the point tool. And that point, I'm going to go ahead and hit escape. That point is the center of our geometry. So 
let's go with the uh, the center line and we had uh, six millimeters in two places if I do the stack up all right so we go back and measure it look it's 12 millimeters that gives me the option to set this at the midpoint which satisfies the 10 millimeters and the six millimeters from the outside edge so we can always go back and set different dimensions but if the design intent is that that will always be centered on that face if it moves or changes then the uh, the whole location will move with it I'll go ahead and accept and then one more time on the other face oh let me um, get out of that I needed to hit the S key and hole wizard so the uh, the cut extrude would have done the uh, done the same thing I'll place the uh, the point I'll jump back into the center line we're finding the inside and the outside edges of the of the geometry there we go All right and then setting our relation to the midpoint pretty much just grabbing the point dragging it till it furs that midpoint relation now we have our geometry save it and we'll move on